another Monday, another mailbag. Let's get in here and see what we got this time. Let's start with modules, quantity two. Okay. Well, this one's pretty obvious. It's trimmer potentiometers. These little guys, circuit board mount. Uh, what brand do they say? Benting, something like that. Part number is 3298. Which doesn't mean anything to me. So let's see what the resistance is. Though it's got a little legend on it which shows that the fixed portion is the two outer pins and the middle pin is the wiper, which is exactly what you'd expect. Get back up there. So across the fixed portion here we got nine point hello. Oh, ooh, those are thin wires. I didn't expect them to be that bendy. Okay. And we got here 9.7k. So they're 10k pots. And they're probably going to be linear. Yeah, well, those are cheap. I didn't expect them to be that bendy. Oh, well. Um, so this kind of little guy is... Oh, there you go. W103. 10k. Okay. So these little guys, like I said, will be 10 turn. And 10k. So that'll... Let me get fairly fine precision. Let's check the listing. This is uh, part numbers and stuff. 10K trim pot trimmer potentiometer from Golden Electronic. I've bought from them many times. 10 of them for 99 American cents or $1.28 Canadian. Those took about three months to get here. Wow. Anyway, there's not much to say about them. They're just... 10k potentiometers and they're small and they're 10 turns and the other thing in that package from Gowin is these little adapter boards here so there's actually six no five little adapter boards Let's zoom in on them these are dip to surface mount resistors or capacitors or inductors i suppose of a couple of different sizes similar to the surface mount ic to dip packages or adapter boards that i've got previously and what else yeah there's the eight pin version with of course a 555 in it because what else would i put in one Anyway, let's uh, let's go see how much go in charge me for that one. Five piece SMT SMD components, 805603402 to dip adapter. Oh, I should have just read this. That would have told me. Uh, from go in, we knew that because it was in the same package. And another dollar twenty eight Canadian ninety nine cent American purchase. And yeah, five of them. Okay, what's in the big one? It says five times circuit board and five times circuit board. It's probably circuit boards. Or maybe not. Whatever it is, it's very well padded. Wow. Lots of wrapping here. There's five of those. Aha! USB female to plugs. Oh, I know. I remember now. That was something that I ordered as part of my let's test out USB cables. Okay. And, oh, okay. So these are uh, USB A, I think. And these ones are one of those micro, I think. Mini micro. Um, they are, uh, that one, 
Yeah, which is the same thing you find on most phones that aren't Apple these days. Okay. Let's go find the listing for your... Oh, I shouldn't have opened both of them. Whatever. You're going to see them anyway. Okay, let's go find a list. Hmm. So these came from Banggood for a change. Uh, five pieces USB 2.0 female socket. Female head socket to dip. 2.5, yeah, four pin adapter board, whatever. Uh, $2.14 Canadian for the five of them. And not much to say about that, really. It's just a USB socket. And in the same package, also from Banggood, five pieces micro USB dip socket B type microphone 5P patch. What? Microphone? Okay, whatever. Um, five pin. I'm guessing that one of those five. Okay. I haven't actually looked that carefully at the. Uh, the USB spec to look at this newer connectors. So it looks like there's uh, an extra pin that's I.O., not just the four standard pins that you find on the USB-A. Interesting. Next in, we have expansion board module. Again, fairly well packaged. Oh, and five of them. Nice. Let's see what kind of modules these guys are. So, what do we have here? We have pins on both ends. Uh, data in, DE, data enable, RE and RO. Read enable and read out, I don't know. And on the other end... VCC, A, B, and ground. It looks like two of those, the A and the B, are also available on there. Okay. Very straightforward. What is the chip? I'm wondering, are these current sensors? What does it say? Not really. Okay. I have to do it the more traditional way. Let's look at the chip itself. Okay, that chip is a Max 485. Hmm. Trying to remember. I think that might be a, some kind of a serial line driver. I have to look it up. Hmm. Here we go. 2510 pieces Max 485 RS485 module. TTL to RS485 module for Arduino or Raspberry Pi. I bought five of them for two dollars and sixty-nine cents from Alice One 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 Nineteen Eighty-Three. Now then, Max Four Eight Five, or sorry, the RS Four Eight Five is in fact a serial uh, data protocol, and these are the uh, RS Four Eight Five can go over some really long distances on just a balanced two-wire circuit. They don't. I believe they don't need a ground reference other than, you know, to power the other end. But it doesn't need a ground reference between the transmitter and receiver. And uh, I believe RS-485 is the underlying serial standard for DMX-512, which is the uh, professional stage lighting control type standard, or has been for many, many years. They're going to more network-based stuff now, but it's still a completely standard protocol. And I believe that's... Hang on. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, DMX-512 uses the EIA-485, which is also known as the RS-485 standard. And the RS-485 standard can go at up to 10 megabits per second or with lower data rates up to like a 1.2 kilometers or 4,000 feet. Um, so that's that's pretty slick. And yeah, you can either run them in master slave or full duplex, but full duplex you need four wires, two going that way and two going the other way. Um, but with one 
you can or with one pair of wires you can run it in master slave which is what DMX512 does okay so this is if I get my hands on some uh, DMX lighting fairly cheaply I can use an Arduino to control them which was probably my initial thought in buying these things otherwise I can use them for controlling things wired over a pair of wires over a ridiculously long distance Okay, next in we have arcade buttons. Oh, okay. We had a few arcade buttons not that long ago in the mailbag. These are a different type. They're even bigger. Haha. <laughs> These are a classic big red button. So they, okay, they look like yeah, they've got an LED for illumination inside. Just goes into this little socket here. And then that clips up inside here. And again, it's got the little locking mechanism. So just in and in one way and rotate to lock. There it is. And then actually these are very similar to those other ones. Just a bigger, redder button. Just snap together like that. There, maybe I do it. That one, that one, yeah, that goes on easier. There. And the plunger pushes the micro switch. That's almost, yeah, the back part of that is very, very similar. And then you've got your two LEDs, your normally open normally close and wiper of the switch that's great arcade video game big round push button LED lighted illuminated lamp 512 volts 45 millimeters hmm from magic-stone-us even though they're not in the US they're in Guangzhou China um, those cost me $1.92 each Canadian and I bought a pair of them so you can do your own math Total size 45 millimeters, button head diameter 37 millimeters, voltage 5 volts slash 12 volts. I'm assuming that's for the LED. And all the rest of it is just stuff. Includes LED push button, lamp holder with same color LED, adapter ring, retaining nut, micro switch. And the last one today. I hope everybody's staying awake. Uh, this one is just electronic parts. Oh. Come in. Okay. Obviously today electronics is who I ordered these from. These look like little circuit boards, proto boards. Perf board kind of things. So that's <coughs> these guys aren't we aren't uh, skimping on the plastic, are they? Did I actually cut into one of these? There we go. So these are basically knockoff Vero board. Vero board differs from. <laughs> Hang on, let me get some. So a Vero board differs from normal perf board. Um, which is very common. You can see it here. There we go. So the regular old perf board just has a copper pad around each hole. This strip board, um, Vero board is a brand name. Um, it's very common in UK and probably Europe. I don't really see it much here in North America, but that could just be, I need to get out more. Um, but basically it's a long strip all the way along so when you're putting your circuit in you just decide where to make the brakes to break the traces so you can have half a dozen connected and then break it or if you're putting an IC in across this way you just make a cut right underneath it now the Vero brand stuff when you buy it in a kit comes with a little brad point type drill bit that you just use to cut out the uh, the track 
you can also use a knife or a Dremel or whatever, a little saw or whatever you have. But I figured I'd grab a couple of those because I haven't actually worked with it before. It's, as I said, it seems to be pretty common amongst uh, UK and European dudes. Uh, and I've seen it mentioned in the oh, in the magazines since back in the like, late 70s, early 80s when I first started getting into this stuff. But I've never actually seen it on the shelf in, in uh, here in Canada. So, something to play with. Prototyping PCB board, strip board 94 by 53 millimeters from Teda 2009, which we guessed from the little insert. They're selling these things for $1.66 Canadian each. And there we go. That's today's variety of mailbag items. As always, all over the place. Trim pots, surface mount adapter thingies, um, these RS-45 line drivers. Those should be interesting. And of course, big red buttons. You gotta have big red buttons. Um, the USB adapters. And the strip board should be interesting to play with too. I said, some of this stuff I'm just getting because I've always thought it would be cool, but a lot of it is for either upcoming projects or just shop stock, as always. If you've got any questions about any of this stuff, if you've got any, uh, any gotchas that you want to share, just in case, uh, so I don't blow myself up at some point playing with any of these things, um, anything at all you want to talk about regarding this, please comment down in the, in the comment section down below. I'd like to hear from you. The links are going to be in the description. And as always, thanks to my Patreon supporters. They're few, but they're mighty. And their donations in my Patreon tip jar help pay for all this stuff. So I really, really do appreciate it. That's it for now. I will talk to you again.